I don't know where I am, but I feel like I need to talk. I've thought about this moment where I would speak with you, so stay with me, because what I'm about to share, I've never told anyone. When I was young, something happened to me. I received an invitation to a party. Well, I want to get right down to it because I stumbled upon this party at exactly the right time. As I entered the backyard, everyone was naked. Skinny dipping is always good. I immediately threw off all my clothes. Everyone was floating and swimming and sinking. And it doesn't really matter. It's all the same in life. Everyone looked like they came from the same herd of animals. A breeding human herd. And this party made me want to live it up. It was strange though. Everyone was talking, but I felt like I was invisible. Nobody turned their head towards me, let alone shared their voice. Laughter was rising up in all directions and bodies were being admired and particulates of beauty were splashing everywhere. I was young and this was fun. Life was easy. I didn't know anything about myself. I didn't know if I wanted to kiss a man or kiss a woman. Everything felt so good. Everyone was obsessed with feeling good and I really wanted to be with someone. I began to listen. I realized that no one knew anyone at the party. I was free. Everyone was free. I used my eyes to look around. The way the bodies moved in and out of the water was so slick. In the light of the moon, everyone glistened with a slippery look. Each body had its own shape, and shapes and colors have always been intriguing. I allowed the moonlight into my iris so I could search for my soulmate. Now, sometimes it isn't easy to find one, but sometimes it is. Uh, sometimes that someone is ourselves, ourselves included. It's nice to include yourself. But it's nice to find someone. And then, out of nowhere, the perfect body came out of the dead center of this pool and the way the water softened around her, she was way beyond beautiful. Her face and her body were sculpted in divine perfection. And for the first time in my life, I knew something about myself. I knew, I knew I could follow her right up a spiral staircase as that woman from Venus removed herself from the water, I was mesmerized. I was one thing, becoming a part of another thing, and I was soaking in everything. My body began to respond. Excitement. I was eager. I wanted something new. Reality was just another word in that moment. The wind began to blow, and. She wrapped herself inside a white sheet, her crispy body, her long red hair that she tied in a knot on her head, and her beautiful slender feet. And she walked past me with those feet. And her hair and her body blew in the wind. And she slapped my face with a white wrap and I fell to my knees and crawled directly behind her. And she led me to a space behind the lively oak tree. And right there was a grand piano, a piano with all the keys in perfect order. And she sat down upon this deep, dark black bench and I crawled directly between her legs and settled in. Ding, 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 ding. She began to play flawlessly. She was a prodigy. It took my breath away completely. And the melody transported my being into a state of bliss. And her feet danced upon those petals. Like Isadora Duncan danced in the sand. And there I was. Music was wild. I was free. And I glanced between her knees. And I saw her private part. And my head hit the top of that darn piano and I passed out cold. One of my best friends wrote, The queen was passed out cold. The game spilled to the floor in ecstasy. 
I was never the same after that. I felt like a prisoner in a black and white striped suit wrapped around me like a tight burrito. All of a sudden in my head, I was in my kitchen. And everything turned black and white and all colors had disappeared for the first time in my life. And in the middle of my kitchen floor, there was a duffel bag. And the duffel bag had ruffles on it, but no ridges to touch or to feel, just fluffy duffel ruffles. And I placed my finger under the ruffle to feel the smoothness of the material, the actual material that makes the ruffle real. It was so heavy. Then I was walking to my favorite living room. Looks like I had prepared it gracefully. I had 100 sheets of cardboard, 50 rolls of duct tape, a light and some charcoal. And that charcoal gray became the color of my soul in that moment. And the sound of the tape and the scissors all became so huge in my psyche. I duct tape myself airtight into a room. No light, no air. I was gasping. I had one flame burning in a golden lantern. I fired up those briquettes in a small pit. And the heat was all I needed to escape from the world. When those embers turned to bright orange, I knew it was time to crawl into the piano. All I remember is my breathing was labored, my head felt light, my crawl was woozy, and I wanted to die like a burning ember. As I was gasping for air, a man broke into my house. He picked the lock with a knife. He wanted to rob me, but he couldn't find any goods. His life was empty. He needed to fill it. My house was chosen randomly. When he saw the cardboard over the door, he carved a perfect circle and came right on through. As the light in the air moved into the room, he scoped me out under the piano. And as I was revived from the air in his mouth, mouth to mouth, I awoken. I was eye to eye with a man. I felt so good. He saved me. I was free again. And my life was back. I initiated the most romantic kiss. My eyes closed. My breath was taken. That man saved me. And when I fully opened my eyes, I was surrounded by the skinny dippers. And the goddess with the long red hair was holding me in her arms, gazing deeply into my eyes. Now I've got to go lie down because I have said so much that I have never said before.